Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. The Bible is going to tell us how we are able to experience joy in Jesus Christ. You see, as Christians, we're able to experience joy in Him. The lost are able to experience joy by meeting our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the Bible even goes on to say that when one person knows Jesus Christ as their Savior, that there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. We're going to look at this joy of how it affects every person and how it can affect even us tonight as well. And so if you take your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 15, we're going to start in verse number 1 of Luke chapter 15. Starting in verse number 1, the Bible says this, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. Now, I want to stop right there because it's important for us to to really get the, the mood of this verse. These are the people who were completely outcast of society. These are the people... The, you know, we look at, at the type of people that Jesus went to go minister to, where, where there were the poor, the downtrodden, those who were cast out, those who nobody wanted anything to do with. Those are the type of people that Jesus came to minister to. We look at, at people like the woman at the well, where she had five husbands, and then her current husband wasn't even the, wasn't even, or excuse me, the current man who she was living with wasn't even her husband. And then we can look at people like the demoniac of Gadara. How many of us would want to hang out with that guy? We can look at, at different people like, uh, like the woman who was taken in the very act of adultery that was brought to Jesus Christ. We can look at men who were sick with palsy and they were brought to Jesus Christ. We can look at the publicans. The publicans were the Tax collectors, or in their day, the IRS. I mean, come on, how many of us want to be friends with them? (laughs) We can look at people like that. And these are exactly the type of people who Jesus came to minister to. And guess what? These people are a perfect picture of both you and me. Because before we met Jesus Christ... We were nothing. And the Bible goes on to say this. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners, and he eateth with them. Now let's take a a moment right there again. Now we have to look at the religious crowd. The religious crowd of that day, they look at Jesus Christ, and as they're all gathered here together, they're looking and they're saying one, one to another, they're saying, look at this guy. He says that he's the Messiah But look at the type of people that he's hanging out with. Look at the type of people who he's eating with. Look at the type of people who he's who he is uh, who he's around. You have to understand the mentality that's going through uh, uh, the religious crowd of this day. Now, as we see, uh, even in other parts of the of the scripture, we could see when Jesus went to a Pharisee's house named Simon. That as he went to eat there, that there's a woman who went and washed his feet with her tears and dried his feet with her hair. And I remember that the Bible says that Simon, the Pharisee, thought within himself, if he was really the Messiah, he would know what manner of woman toucheth him. You see, this is the type of mentality that was very, very prevalent within the religious crowd during Jesus Christ's day. They thought of these people as as honestly garbage. They thought of these people as trash. They wanted nothing to do with these types of people. But this is exactly who Jesus Christ came to save. And so as Jesus Christ, he begins to speak this parable in verse number three, and he says, and he spake this parable. Now notice the word there is singular. There are going to be three stories here, but the the word is singular. And he's going to go on to say, unto them, or unto the Pharisees, the religious crowd of that day, saying this, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost till till he find it? 
When he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and his neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the sheep which I had lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, moreover than ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, that doth not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it. And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repents. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this opportunity that you give to us to come and worship you in your house. God, we thank you for scriptures like this, God, where you came to save the broken, people like me, God. God, where you came to change lives. God, we thank you for this. We thank you, God, that even today you're still in the business of saving people. God, would you help us, Lord, just for a few moments as we as we just go through, your, through a little bit of study of your word, God, would you, would you be honored and glorified here tonight, God? Would you speak to our hearts and we'll thank you for it, for it's in your name we pray, Jesus Christ, amen. Now first, um, we will look at, the, at there, that there could be joy in the hearts of sinners. We look at how there is a person who went out and uh, went to go and, and get this, uh, this lost sheep. We will look at a, a man who went to go find that lost sheep. We look at a woman who went to go and find that lost coin. And we can look at story after story after story all throughout Scripture where, the, where Jesus saves. We can look at stories after stories, even in our own life, where many of us could remember the moment in life where Jesus came and He, uh, and he transformed our lives into what we are today. We can look back and I know, I can personally say that I thank God I am no longer the man who I used to be, but I am a new creature under Jesus Christ. And I know that any person who was bought by the blood of Jesus Christ can say the same thing, that we are glad that He has transformed us by His saving power. And that after salvation, that we have, that we have mercy and we have grace that we find before God Almighty. And that there is no longer wrath between us and God the Father, but there is peace. And that His mercy saved my soul. Amen. We can look at, at places such as Luke chapter 15. Uh, we see the third parable where there is a son who w wasted his, his uh, inheritance with riotous living. And the Bible says that after that, they, there arose a great famine in the land. And when he went to try to, uh, uh, to go to his friends, uh, his friends all forsook him and they left him. And so he had to join himself to a, a, a pig farmer, basically. And as he was there, the Bible says that as, um, uh, 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 that as he was feeding the pigs, that his wages were basically the pig slop. And so as he was feeding the pigs, the Bible says that one day he came to himself and he says, how many of my father's servants, hired servants, have bread enough to eat and I perish with hunger? He says, lo, I will go to my father and say, I have sinned before heaven and against thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And the Bible says that when he left, Yet when he was a great way off, the father saw him. And he, ran on, and he ran and he fell on his neck and he kissed him. There's forgiveness that the father brought with him. We can look at other stories such as Luke chapter 8 and even Matthew chapter 8 with the maniac of Gadara. As I mentioned earlier, we see a man as the Bible describes him as he would, uh, was wild and he would cut himself and that he would uh, dwell among the tombs and that um, the people oftentimes they would try to bind him with chains and with fetters but that the demons would give him supernatural strength and that he would be able to break out of these chains and break out of these fetters and go uh, running wild and, and screaming among the tombs naked and everybody was afraid of this guy and the truth is, is that can you really blame these people of being afraid of him. 
But one day, the Bible says that he met the Savior, Jesus Christ. And when he met the Savior, Jesus Christ, the Bible says that these, that these demons, they immediately knew who he was and they ran and fell on their knees and they said, what have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High? And he says, uh, Jesus says, uh, he eventually cast, them out of, uh, cast the demons out of the man and into the swine. And as they, the Bible says that they go uh, uh, into the swine and they run up the cliff and off the cliff and they choke in the sea. And these uh, pig herders, as they see it, they're afraid of what, was, what, what just transpired before Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that they go and run and they tell the city of what Jesus Christ did in this man's life. When, the, when they came back, the Bible says that they saw this man sitting and clothed and in his right mind because of the transforming power of Jesus Christ. We could find scripture after scripture where the Bible says, blessed is the man whose sin is not imputed unto him. We could find where the Bible says that God offers forgiveness and mercy because of his son. And my friend, I am here to tell you tonight that if you're not saved, that God offers forgiveness and he offers grace and he offers mercy to anybody who's willing to receive his son. And I'm glad that it is the free gift of Jesus Christ that makes, us, that makes us whole, that makes us free, that has saved us from the bondage of our sin. That we no longer have to be in the darkness as we once were. But now, through the glorious power of Jesus Christ, we are made free through Jesus. And the Bible says that when we are saved, that there is joy that enters into our heart not because of anything that we have done, but because of what Jesus Christ and his accomplished work on the cross did for us. And all that we had to do was simply accept his son. And I love how we as sinners are able to experience joy through his son Jesus Christ. You see, but it doesn't end there. We are also called as Christians uh, um, to continue in our joy. Now, how, how is it that we continue in our joy? We look at verse number four. It says, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? We look at this, at this parable, uh, the story within the parable, as Jesus is saying, that look, there has to be somebody to go out and to find that lost sheep. There has to be somebody to go out and to find that lost coin. There has to be somebody to go out and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with the lost and dying world. As a matter of fact, if you would, turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 10. And in Romans chapter 10, we're going to find a familiar passage of Scripture. In Romans chapter 10, verse number 13, uh, most people, they use this as the Romans wrote. It's uh, uh, often quoted uh, where the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Wonderful verse. Uh, you know, God, again, freely offering his salvation to anyone who will receive it. But then Paul is going to go on and he's going to ask a series of very logical, yeah, very simple questions uh, preceding this verse. And in verse number 14, the Bible says this, For whosoever, excuse me, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So now Paul is asking this question. He's saying, yes, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. But now Paul is asking, how are they going to be saved if they don't believe? Well, the simple answer is, is that they can't. Then Paul, he's going to ask another very simple question. He's going to ask, and how shall they believe on him in whom they have not heard? So Paul is saying that if they're going to call upon him, they need to believe on him. But in order for them to believe on Jesus Christ, they need to hear about Jesus. They need somebody to go and to tell them. So if they can't believe on him because they've never heard, how are they going to get saved? Well, the simple answer is they won't. They can't. Then Paul's going to ask another question. And he says, and how shall they hear without a preacher? So Paul, he's asking this. He says, well, yes, 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. But in order for them to do that, they need to believe. In order for them to believe, they need to hear. But here's the catch. In order for them to hear, there has to be somebody to go out and to proclaim Jesus Christ among them. There has to be a preacher. You look at this word preacher in the Greek, it actually does not mean a pastor who gets up every Sunday and Wednesday and preaches the, uh, you know, the Bible as we hear. The, this word preacher actually means a proclaimer of truth. This word proclaimer of truth is not limited to men only. This, and it's not limited to pastors, and it's not limited to deacons. That means if you are saved, if I am saved, that makes each one of us responsible to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. That means that we're all res equally responsible for places like Argentina. We're all equally responsible for places like China and Japan and Austin. We're all responsible to get the gospel out and to share the Jesus Christ with those people. And so Paul, he asks this question, how are they going to hear if there's preachers among them who won't say anything? Well, the truth is, is that they can't. You see, but this is exactly why God commissioned us as his church to go and to share Jesus Christ with everybody. You see, this is exactly why God mentioned in this passage of Scripture of Luke chapter 15 that there has to be a shepherd who goes out and finds that lost sheep. There has to be a woman who's willing to put a little bit extra time to be that light and to find that lost coin. There has to be people willing to go out and to share Jesus Christ with a lost and dying world. And you see, the Bible says, according to 1 John, that when we do that, that our joy is full as Christians in Jesus Christ. So Christian, I ask, is your joy full? Are you experiencing the fullness, the satisfaction, the joy that is within Jesus Christ? Because that only comes through our obedience to Him. And as we're obedient to Him, I love it because then He fills us with joy. And then in turn, we're able to, uh, Lord willing, lead somebody to Jesus Christ and they get saved and they experience joy in Him as well. You see, God's, God's joy is not limited to one person. When God brings joy, everybody benefits from that. I love what Jesus Christ did, and I purposely uh, left out the rest of, the, of the, uh, uh, the story of the maniac of Gadara, because the Bible says that after he was clothed and sitting in his right mind, that the people, they began to uh, beseech Jesus Christ, saying that he would depart from their coast. And so he did, but before he got onto the boat, the Bible says this, that the former maniac of Gadara, he began to, to run to Jesus Christ, and he says, please take me with you. And Jesus Christ said, no, you stay here and you tell those people of the great work that I have done in your life. And the Bible says that he began to, he left Jesus Christ and he began to greatly publish abroad the great things that Jesus Christ had done in his life. And when he had done that, the Bible says that when Jesus Christ came back, according to Luke chapter 8, that everyone was on the shore waiting and ready to receive him, all because of the ministry of one man. You see, you never know who you're going to reach. You never know where people are in their life. But all that God has called us to do is simply be faithful to him. You see, here's the awesome thing about God and his work. We don't save souls. We cannot save souls. The Holy Spirit, God, is the one who saves souls. But he uses us as his vessels to go and to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I love what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians as he says, I have, Paul, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God was the one who gave the increase. It's not up to me to bring about the results. It's just simply up to us to be obedient to what God has called us to do. And let him bring the results. Amen. You see, that takes a lot of stress off of us. 
And all we're simply called to do is be obedient to Jesus Christ and to God and His great commission to share Jesus Christ with those people, to love people, to show them that there is a God who cares for them. And not only that, but lastly, the Bible says in verse number 7 that I say unto you likewise, there is joy Joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, moreover than ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. I love this, this scripture right here. Because here's the awesome thing. That if we're willing to go and do our part and share Jesus Christ with those people, and if they choose to get saved, I didn't finish the rest of the parable of the prodigal son. Because the Bible says that when the son came to himself, and yes, the father, he did run and he, and he fell on his neck and he kissed him. And the, the son, he began to recite to his father what he, what he said to himself back with the pigs. He says, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. But the Bible says this, that the father, he called his servants and he says, bring hither the robe and put it on his back and shoes and put it on his feet and put a ring on his finger and kill the fatted calf for my son who was once dead is now alive, who was once lost is now found. You see, if we're willing to do our part there's always going to be a father in heaven who's waiting and ready to receive his next son or daughter back to him. And the Bible says that when we do that, that there is joy in heaven because of our obedience as Christians to God Almighty. Amen. Could you imagine this? That we are able to bring joy to the heart of God the Father by telling somebody about Jesus Christ. So Christian, if you're sitting here today and maybe you might find your joy waning a little bit, I want to encourage you, share Jesus Christ. If you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ, He invites you today. To accept his free gift. And the Bible says that when somebody gets saved, that there's joy in the presence of the angels of God, just simply over one sinner that repents.